Hello everyone, today I have a very good news for you. Realistic Vision has released the SDXL version. This is still in a beta version, but results are already stunning and we're gonna test it together. Realistic Vision was already producing amazing results with the version 1.5 and on the other side, Stable Diffusion Excel, the base model, is already producing very good results without having to fine tune it. So now after fine tuning this model, let's see what comes out. For testing it, I'm going to use Diffusion Hub. For who doesn't know, this is a platform embedding Stable Diffusion, Automatic 1111. And it's quite useful because you don't have to have a powerful computer for running it, and you don't have to code, you don't have to do any initialization. You just need to launch it. Today, I'm going to use the faster platform. Once you initialize it, Diffusion Hub is exactly the same as Stable Diffusion. So if you're familiar with that, you won't have any issues running it. And they have integrated already Stable Diffusion Excel, and they have integrated as well the new version of Realistic Vision. If you go into CVTI, we can see all of the details regarding Realistic Vision Excel. And looking at the characteristics, we can see that this was fine-tuned on the SD Excel. We knew that, fine. That is a checkpoint merge, so we need to use it as a base model. And then very important, we can read here that this checkpoint recommends a variational autoencoder. So you need to download it if you haven't done it yet and place it into the variational autoencoder folder inside your Stable Diffusion Web UI. This is simply the Stable Diffusion Excel variational autoencoder, so you can download it directly from Hugging Face as well. Anyway, when you use Diffusion Hub, you don't need to download anything because everything is already within it. So we have already the Stable Diffusion Excel base. We have already Realistic Vision Excel version one, the beta version we are looking at today. And we have already as well the SDXL variational encoder. So what you have to do, you will just need to, you know, change the, the main model, the checkpoint in this section and the stable diffusion variational encoder in here. You can pick this one or you can just choose automatic. It doesn't matter because the automatic is going to pick the SDXL. When I was looking at this, uh, you know, this page, uh, I remained shocked, positively shocked by, by the quality of these pictures, mainly this one. So let's reproduce this one first. Let's click on this icon on the bottom right of the picture and copy generation data. We go back into Diffusion Hub, we paste all of the settings and we press this little button here for moving all of the settings across our page. And then you will see they are using a DPM as the colors. They are using 40 simply steps. The width and the height are the default one for Disable Diffusion Excel, and that's it. Something I noticed I'm quite impressed by is the description. This is not really detailed as we are used to, right? When we were using Stable Diffusion 1.5, even if we were using Realistic Vision, which was wonderful, we were usually using a long and detailed description for getting very good results. In this case, we are not using many, right? And this is one of the common characteristics of Stable Diffusion Excel. Let's press on Generate. And this is the result. So we have not even upscaled it and look at the detail. I really like it. Now let's try and change the seed. I would like to see if, you know, if this is just a case or if it's uh, the same by using different seeds. So I'm going to use a random seed and then I'm going to increase the batch count to five in order to get more results and being able to compare them. Again, we are not using high resolution fix. We are not using upscale. And looking at those results, so we can say that this is not just a coincidence that we were getting a wonderful output, but it's just how it is. As the Excel, it's amazing. I would like now to try different you know, dimensions because the 1024 by 1024 is the default dimension for Stable Diffusion Excel. When Stable Diffusion Excel, they have also included some aspect ratio conditioning. So I would imagine that changing you know, the dimension, it won't impact the quality of the output, which was something that was happening with Stable Diffusion 1.5. So let's have a look at that. I'll try with a landscape first, and then I'll try with a portrait. Let's click on this button here, and I'll choose this default landscape ratio. And I'm going to reduce the batch count as well. And I'll press generate. And this is so detailed. It's quite impressive again. Although maybe 
here is not that realistic, but look at the light, look at the eyelashes and look at the skin again. It's just amazing. Now I switch the dimensions in order to have a portrait and press generate. These are amazing as well. So there is no doubt that this aspect ratio was integrated with the stable diffusion Excel. Now let's go back to the landscape. I would like to see something different from people, something like that. These are incredible, honestly. Look at the water, look at the trees. I haven't upscaled anything and it, this looks amazing. I'm just uh, really, really impressed. Like also in this case, the reflection of the mountain and the forest on the lake, it's just wonderful. <laughs> really impressive, isn't it? And I think that at this point, Stable Diffusion is getting results really comparable to Midjourney. Let's now have a look to a random portrait, a detailed photo of a man in a city center with snow and cloudy. I'm gonna swap these two dimensions for having a portrait and I'll press generate. So these are the results. Obviously, in this case, there is a little bit of work to be done. Like for example, the teeth, they don't look really great. But look at the skin wrinkles. They, they look very, I don't know, they look perfect to me. Like it really looks like it's a real picture if I didn't see the, you know, this, uh, this issue here. But this is an issue that can be solved with upscale or, you know, a detailer. Let's have a look at this other one. It seems quite good if we look at from, you know, from far away, but if we zoom in, obviously there are not many details, say we cannot see very much the skin because this is not upscaled and it's not focusing on the face. So also in this case, we can improve this picture using a detailer. Actually, let's try it. Let's copy and paste the seed in here. Let's open the a detailer. This is already embedded within Diffusion Hub, so we'll Open this tab, enable a detailer, and in the first tab, we are going to activate the YOLO for the face, the YOLO model, and in the second one, we are going to use the YOLO for the hands. So batch count one, because we are generating just one image. And this is the final result using the detailer. Now it's not amazing. I think we should run it more times, forgetting what we would like, and probably we'll, we'll need to use a little bit of in painting as well, forgetting very good results, but overall it looks quite good. Yeah, I think that in general realistic vision is better when you have close-up portraits and landscapes are amazing too and portraits are very good as well. However, th there are still issues uh, obviously regarding uh, faces and hands where they are not close-up shot, but this is not an issue related to realistic vision, it's an issue related to uh, diffusion models. Now if you want to have a look at your files within Diffusion Hub, you just need to press on this your files in here and you will have all of your results divided by, you know, tabs within Stable Diffusion. When you want to terminate the session, don't forget to press on terminate, otherwise your credits will finish. So that's it for today. We have reviewed together Realistic Vision Excel. I'm really looking forward to the, you know, next uh, version because this is still the beta version, as I said before. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.